Uh, I have to my right. For those of you, they, they require little introduction, I would have thought. So we have uh, Mitchell Brett Baker, who's executive chairwoman of Mozilla, and we have Mark Sermon, who is executive director. So let me sit down and speak to you both. So. I don't know about you guys out there, but um, certainly when I was telling people what I was doing this weekend, and I said I was coming to MozFest, the first thing I have to do is explain it doesn't involve Morrissey. And then the second, <laughs> the second thing, yeah, that's the British thing. And then the second thing I have to do is explain um, that, you know, the Firefox, the people who, who you know, who, who make Firefox. So does that, everybody can relate to that, I imagine. So, so that leads me to the first question of like, why do something that's completely different to Firefox? Or is it completely different to Firefox? Mitchell. Well, you know, I see that everything that Mozilla does is related. So I don't think it's completely different. You know, Mozilla's general goal is a build part of the internet that promotes openness and accessibility, build our technical infrastructure as a global public resource, and build a community of people who care about that, want to build that, and are actually using open, open internet, open technologies, and open principles in their own work. So for me, it's all on a spectrum. The technical product piece gives us huge leverage. Uh, there is a, you know, a phrase, software as code, uh, meaning software code is legal code, is social code, because uh, technology has so much impact on what we do. So I'm a subscriber to that. But also that the power of people, of actual individuals, to make our own lives. Um, we're lucky right now. The internet is a technology that has a lot of possibilities for that. And the sense of people engaging and practicing open and building their own fields with some of the principles that we also illustrate in the internet and in Firefox is a long-term legacy that's really key. So for me, it's all, it's all along a spectrum. And uh, Mark. Yeah, I mean, all of that, I guess, uh, you know, why MozFest is that people part of it. And I, I guess when I go back to a version of our mission that's in our, our kind of charter, it talks about us guarding the open nature of the internet or keeping it healthy. And what Mozilla did in the first era, I guess what attracted me is really have an impact through software and technology. Uh, I mean, we would not have the internet we had today, had Firefox and, and other things not emerged. But we're also at a moment where, while it was people in the beginning that made Firefox and made it popular, there's a broader need for that movement piece. So I often think about us in this era needing both to be in the market, which is what we were good in the beginning at, but really fuel the movement piece as well and the movement in the market together. So for me, that's really what MozFest is, is about, is that people and movement part, so that we've got that voice and sort of pushing things ahead. And you heard that you know, this morning as we opened up is there's a lot of different stuff this year, including this speaker series, but the art and culture piece and whatever that is about taking the movement beyond uh, really just being a technology-centric movement. And just let's have a show of hands. So who, for who is this their first MozFest? Welcome. Oh, wow. oh most Welcome. people. Wow. Yeah. Let's we'll give you a round of applause. <laughs> and for those, who has been before? Who's a veteran? OK, yeah. <laughs> Great, okay, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. It's always nice to meet old friends here, but also to uh, meet new people, of course, and it's always evolving. So let's talk about something that happened very recently and kind of, you know, what, that's been on, on a lot of people's minds and this kind of DD, DDoS attack, um, you know, a little more than a week ago. And, you know, talk to us a little bit about how we situate that and how we, how we can think about, um, you know, what's happening right now to, uh, online and, and with the web. All right, well, I'll start. You know, for, for those of us who've been around forever, like the nature of the internet or the open internet or the, the open principles of the internet underlying so much of what's possible today is uh, something we've grown up with and is something obvious. But I think for those, uh, it, that's not true of everyone. And it's really, it's, it's sometimes, it's just so easy today since the network is everywhere through devices and phones to sort of take it for granted and assume that the things that we're accustomed to being able to do are just part of the environment. And that's partially true. I think what this DDoS attack means for... Ah. Uh -huh. Supplement time, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, means for all of us 
is uh, a time to actually reflect on the nature of the internet or the underlying structure and that it actually does require attention. Like this particular attack, it's not that a general consumer will be able to uh, fix it, right? It requires expertise to fix it, but it is a call that the, the, the network itself, the, the internet, is like a living organism and ecosystem and it requires attention from many different levels and that both in policy, it's gonna be important and so much of what we rely on, whether it's openness in education or open data or science or the ability to access people globally relies on this underlying infrastructure and that some focus and attention there is really important. I think, you know, the building on that, the, the piece, and you know, I'm, I'm sure everybody read it, but if you didn't, this whole DDoS attack that happened was using CCTV cameras and other things that aren't taking over a computer per se to, to build a botnet. And it also speaks to the, the, both the scale of the ecosystem that is growing, just the scale of the internet in our lives as we move into this connected devices era is gonna be huge, right? We're talking about moving from however many small numbers of millions were online when, you know, when Firefox first came out or the first Mozilla browser was released to you know, tens of millions, or hundreds of millions to you know, where we probably will be at about five billion internet users including phones over the next couple of years, but we'll be at 20 billion devices. And so just the surface area of that ecosystem and the areas of risk really become huge and we, you know, it envelops all of our lives. So there is a, also a piece in that of people starting to understand that and to a certain degree starting to understand, you know, like the natural environment that often we take for granted, we all have a role to, to play in it. As, you know, people, once that moves from being a CCTV camera that maybe in your office to being your baby monitor, um, people might start to think about these things a bit different. So you kind of saying we all have a role in this. So talk to me, we, we're seeing people of all ages here and you know, a seven year old running a session for, on Raspberry Pi, for example. So talk to me about the leadership and, and kind of th th that idea of, of the web, Mitchell. Well, you know, Mozilla Wave is saying, uh, we're hopeful that everyone is a leader. And it can sound a little trite, but at a deep level we do mean that. And Obviously, each one of us has to be a leader for our own lives. Really, there are people around you, but, but we are each responsible for ourselves, ultimately. Uh, and there are this range of opportunities that the technology can enhance or, or diminish, and, and we have a core technology that, that allows enhancing of that. And so leadership, we try to work from that general principle, meaning like the empowerment of individuals is also sometimes trite, but also really deep. Like I used to not like the word empowerment, it seemed too yucky. Uh, but I've given up because it has a meaning that's hard to find in, a, in any other word. Uh, and, and the core underlying architecture of the internet is actually about empowering lots of connections at the very edges. And so it's a good metaphor for individuals you know, having more understanding and ability to affect our own lives. And so that's the core of what we're trying to do. Uh, and uh, in fact, we even think that Firefox is a way of doing that, and that's why we built it. We think of Firefox as a, quote, user agent. I mean, it's a browser, yes, but what is a browser? It's the thing that represents you online. And it used to be the only thing was the universal client that represented you online. And so it had protections for you built in. It allowed you as an individual to change what the website is delivering to you something that's not nearly as possible anymore. And that ability to work on your behalf is everything as simple from the size of the, the font that appears, like you can change that across your entire experience, not app by app, to as profound as setting the terms on which you're tracked across the web, which Firefox uh, allows you to do more than, you know, more than most. So it's supposed to represent you and be the tool through which by default we represent you, but you has a choice of how much you want to tune and, and get involved yourself. And so our view of leadership is to try and do that in all areas, through the technology, through understanding and education, through practicing open, and through every way that anybody here can actually think of. I guess the, the thing I would add and, and connect it back here to, to MozFest is 
you know, as somebody who wasn't there as a founder at the beginning, I can say really nice things. It's not about my ego, the, the early days of Mozilla that really through a combination of some smart decisions and, and luck and the environment, there was an ability to take leadership and really shift things with Firefox. And if I think now, you know, one organization, whether it's Mozilla or Wikipedia or a startup on Kickstarter that has a radical open idea is not likely on its own going to make that level of a shift. There's going to have to be a bunch of fronts in terms of how a healthy internet continues to emerge, how we tackle everything from security to the equity pieces to, you know, are there ever open smartphones in the future? What happens with the future of IoT and the values we have? And so I think that what MozFest for me represents is something that all of us need to do and certainly Mozilla needs to do more is find more people going after more of the problems in more different ways because it won't just be one browser that actually makes the difference. And so to me, it is the kind of people here who are trying to take a shot at a different kind of internet or protecting the kind of internet we love. They're the kind of leaders we need. And you know what's interesting is it's not just that we all can take that leadership, we also need to invest in each other and those people and that's also what the spirit of this place is, is we actually get better and more likely to succeed by doing things like we do here at MozFest and is why we're, we're looking at this Open Internet Leadership Network concept as well. Great. And uh, one of the themes of these talks is digital inclusion. You'll see to my left there are, um, we are being inclusive in the fact that there's a live transcription series uh, going on. Um, the, we're also streaming live to Facebook, so hello to those people who are joining uh, who are not in the room. Uh, now, let's see if, any, I'm sure a lot of you have questions or comments or, or calls to action or, or, or um, you know, just want to share something very, very brief with us. Um, so please do raise your hand if you'd like to ask a question. In the, in the middle here. Yeah, I just want to ask, what's your opinion on the Tor network, which is the dark web, and the Tor browser is exclusively run off uh, Mozilla Firefox? And do you think that it's a uh, it's a good thing where people have more control of the content that they want to look at in their own privacy, or do you think it's a bad thing where? where people can you know, just do whatever they want, share pedophile images or sell drugs on that network? Well, the thing about a powerful technology is it's powerful for everything. Dynamite is the same way, right? Or explosives are the same way. Um, and in fact, that's, I think, where the Nobel Prize came from, was, uh, was to take the... Uh, the results of some, uh, you know, of dynamite, and also turn it into more positive um, responses. So power is power, uh, and uh, and so when you empower people, uh, you empower all of human nature, and you get some negative things out of it. And you know, human nature is pretty varied. You know, as a species, we do some really amazing things, and we do some unbelievably degraded and awful things to each other uh, and to our environment. And so if you actually believe in empowerment as a value, it's a real thing, and in Mozilla we do. And so we believe that individuals should be safe and secure and should be able to secure themselves. And so we are an organization that believes in encryption. We believe in the ability of individual citizens to be safe and to have a degree of privacy that allows for safety. And so we are uh, supporters of technologies that allow individuals to do that, right? And, and of course, it's, it's uh, easy to, to just sweep aside the fact that it also allows people who are doing things one doesn't want to see additional freedoms to. And so you have to always be trying to build healthy communities and healthy societies. And you know, today the world is, is uh, you know, really in a phase of disruption. And so it is actually it takes a pretty fundamental value to continue to believe in encryption for all of us uh, and to believe in the technologies. But, but uh, we, we upstream patches from Tor, like intentionally, in, into the core of Firefox so that there are um, the, the things that are necessary for the Tor browser to work are included in the core distribution so that the maintenance piece is, is less. Uh, you know, Tor is, is not just a browser, it's a whole system, and so they offer a complete system. Uh, but as I say, this is a, I, I don't actually use the word privacy so much, I use the word personal security. And it's very clear in today's environment that sometimes personal security of citizens is 
at least in part in opposition to some national security needs for surveilling citizens. So, so your values are really important in that case, and for us, this empowerment and security and personal security as well for all of us is a pretty key Mozilla value. Do you want to add anything, Mark? I could not have said it better. <laughs> Great. Who else has a question? Over here. Uh, I'm looking into alternatives for Facebook from the viewpoint from Mozilla, because Firefox could be a nice starting point there. Alternatives to Facebook. One of the things that Zainab, for those of you who were here this morning, she kind of was talking about the, the kind of the good, the bad, the ugly of, uh, of decentralization and recentralization within Facebook. And one of the things she did say was, was kind of like, we need more competition in the marketplace, of, uh, et cetera. Well, it's, uh, uh, I'll, I'll leave Mark to uh, pick up that thread. It's a, I mean, it's a complicated one. I, I would say not directly. I think we're looking at that issue of walled gardens and centralization. And, and part of the challenges in looking at it is it is that centralization and aggregation of, of users and ultimately of, of power that does kind of tip things in what I think is the wrong direction. Uh, and how you go out that, at that without becoming it is, is a really tough question, much less how would you actually have a product that goes into the market and, and others have tried uh, you know, to look at alternative social networks. One of the things that I think about personally uh, is are there ways to, other ways, and maybe Firefox can help, to aggregate people uh, in a kind of a bigger way? Is there some sort of co-op or membership or some way that the people who do want a different version of how we communicate can actually all gather around and maybe in a manner that's less centralized, and we have the answer for that right now, but I spend a lot of time thinking about that. The other piece is, uh, you know, where, where is technology not the only answer? And I think you will see as sort of monopolies emerge in some of these spaces that policy and regulation is a part of the answer. You've already seen it with Facebook in the context of zero rating in, in India, where, you know, the citizens and the government said this is too much centralization and too much power. So I think you will actually see both the market and the movement as, as needing to be key levers as we try to figure out what does it look like to keep the internet as something open and empowering to people. Yeah. You know, complicated as it is, I think Facebook is one of the great companies of the internet era. And I don't see and don't particularly my, myself like, like have a... Uh, a goal for Mozilla to do a open Facebook kind of piece. Uh, I do believe like that the, the vision that, that Zuck has about social is a real thing. And you know, I'm from the Valley, so the vision of the founders, you know, and the company, like I'm, I'm bought into that. Uh, and, and so I actually don't think anybody could beat Facebook at what Facebook does. Like that vision is very real, the whole company is built around it, and I don't, like, I, I don't think anybody can beat that. And I wouldn't try. Uh, and so the, then there is a question, as Mark said, of what are the communications areas? Are there places where the social vision does not make sense? And certainly for me, there are a lot of places where the social vision does not make sense. And so I see uh, uh, um, the most productive approach, uh, for at least me, uh, is, is to say Facebook is there. It does a certain thing in a way nobody else is ever going to do. It's their thing. And that social aspect is really important and provides a lot of value and people like it. Uh, there are also, for most of us, maybe not all, you know, maybe some people are social and everything, but for most of us there are some things where that degree of social slash open slash tracked slash monetized approach is not what we want. What are they, where are they, and how do we aim more specifically at providing an alternative in those spaces? Uh, and you know, we tried with identity, we actually had a good technical system, but we couldn't, we didn't find the product that people wanted. Right? We didn't find the thing that caused tens of millions or a hundred million people to say, I want a new identity and I'm going to bother to create a new identity and actually use it. And so I think over time we will find that. Uh, if not us, somebody will, because I, that, that is a pretty clear need. I'm certainly not going to sign up for government services with my Facebook ID. Uh, and, but uh, so I think that there are many areas where 
the vision of social, the power of that vision doesn't make sense. And that, I think, is the space where someone, I hope Mozilla can lead it or spark it or support it or you know, give some resources to whoever figures it out, but I think there are areas like that and, and figuring out how to accelerate those areas and make them legitimate is, is, a, is a thing I spend a lot of time at. But. Thanks for that question. Um, so I think we're out of time, but I want to also thank you for doing this in London. I know that you know, some people might assume that a lot of these things happen in the US, so I'm particularly grateful myself. And how many of you from, are from overseas and have flown in for, for it? Okay, about half, half, I'm thinking, yeah. Um, uh, so uh, thank you. And the other thing I want to thank you for is the, the fact that this is a, a, a festival about doing. You know, we all go to these conferences where we kind of sit and listen and think and then do nothing afterwards. Um, but, you know, it's hands-on. It always has been. It's, you know, I continue to be hands-on. So if you've got any closing remarks on the thoughts of, of, of doing uh, and uh, being, being here in London rather than anywhere else, then, then you know, over to you two. Well, certainly on the, the theme of building uh, and doing, it really is the, the heart of what we started with MozFest seven years ago and, and remains the heart of it. And the idea that what we can build, I think, is, is evolving, and that, that's really exciting. It is really, whether it's doing the art piece of it, doing the code piece of it, doing the campaigning piece of it, so many other things that people are actually working on that are concrete here, all of that is needed to build the kind of future for the web we want and the, the future for humanity we want. Um, so I think keeping this as a barn raising, where we're constantly raising new barns, uh, is really, really important. And hopefully, and we've seen this happen, but it's certainly an ask of all of you, that, that those barns are you, things you continue to build throughout the year and that these relationships are relationships you continue to grow because it is really a global network of people who want the internet to be positive for the world and remain open. Um, that's going to make the difference. I'd add quickly, London's been a great home for us. Uh, Ravensbourne has been a phenomenal home for us, and many thanks for letting us uh, take it over for the weekend. And that the true sign of success is when things run out of control. And so uh, it is my hope that we find MozFest running out of control in ways that we don't see and understand and that bits or parts or all of MozFest or the idea or the events or the happenings pop up all over and it begins to look pretty chaotic because um, it's gathering steam. Thanks. Great, chaos and bonds. Thank you.